The first structure we'll explore is called a, a for loop. And the syntax for a for loop goes like this. You're going to have the keyword for, and sort of like an if statement, you're going to have parentheses, or arguments for a function. And there's three basic parts. And basically, you're going to have an initialization, where you have a variable, you initialize it to be some startup value, so part one. And part two, you're going to test for a condition. So let's say that um, you know I'm testing for while z is less than five, and then finally the, that's the second part. In the third part, I'm going to have an action that it would be performed. So in this case, let's say I'm going to increment z, and then in this for loop, I would generally open and close braces, and any code that I put inside these braces is the code that would be repeated for that specified interval. And in this example, if z starts out at 0, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so each time we'll start up here, we'll loop around, and we'll add 1 to z. We're just incrementing z here. And when we finally get to 5, well, z is no longer less than 5. It is 5. So we would break out of the loop. And this any code that we would desire to repeat would be put right here. Okay. So that's just a sort of a basic for loop there. Okay, we're going to use a for loop, and we'll start with the keyword for, and add some braces. And if you use a NetBeans, it'll do that for you. Now, um, again, whenever I'm using braces, I, I like to add open and closing braces and sandwich the code in between. Um, you know, you could probably bang out code faster if you don't, but that's going to, when you get to lots of nesting and branching decision structures and loops, it's going to end up saving you time, at least as far as debugging and dust checking go. So basic for loop, let's have a variable and we'll initialize it. That'll be the initialization phase of our for loop. The condition we'll test for, let's loop this uh, say 10 times. So while x is less than 10. And the action portion, the third part, well we'll just add 1 to x. We'll give it a post fix increment and that's about, you know the same as saying x is equal to x plus 1. Um, now we're in the console so let's do a little output here just to give ourselves some feedback to kind of see the results of our for loop. And we'll just look at the value of x. And we're just going to concatenate, use the overloaded addition operator and concatenate a string here. So we'll throw the x in there and we just have a little period there. And might as well put this on a different line, maybe we'll tab it over. Okay, so let's run this for loop and just kind of see how it works. Build our project and let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, it's just counting 0 through 9. So it is iterating, repeating or looping 10 times. And just a you know, basic for loop type structure. Another task you, you know, you may see coded in a for loop, sometimes you'll find infinite for loops. In an infinite for loop, if I took the initialization phase and put it outside the loop and I just do two semicolons in there, this loop would pretty much loop forever until it encountered a keyword such as break. Wouldn't recommend doing this, but let's go ahead and build our project and run it. And now it'll just keep going on forever until I actually stop it. It's an infinite loop there. And let's, I'll tell you what, let's add let's increment x here and we'll just keep counting and counting and counting until we can no longer display the value of an integer. Okay, so just to get, kind of give you an idea of an infinite for loop. Let's look at a nested example. Um, we'll create an outer for loop and an inner for loop. And I'm just going to add my body here. 
and I'm just going to make a, a rectangle with some ASCII characters in this example. Not very fancy, but when we combine, we'll find out later, when we combine loops with arrays and we use it in animation, they become very powerful tools indeed. Um, let's go five times here on the outer loop, and same thing, we'll increment X. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put another for loop here. And we'll just create a, a simple ASCII rectangle with our for loops. And then this inner one, create initialize another variable, we'll call it Y. And let's go out a little bit for a little bit to 12. We'll increment Y. And we'll take this and we'll put, um, we'll put an asterisk there. And then maybe over here, we'll just kind of tab over a little bit. And add a line. Maybe two tabs. And then outside of this, just to kind of move the build message down there. So basically what we have here is a nested loop structure, repetition structure, two for loops. And in this case, we have a variable x and a variable y, and we're just going to kind of make a little square here. And notice that for every iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop iterates 12 times. And it's just going to print or display this ASCII character. Um, in this case, column by column, and then on the outside loop, row by row. So if we build that and run it, the output it produces is, you know, approximately a square. Looking at for loops of repetition structures, let's construct a triangle this time, again with a, a similar nested structure. So we'll have an outer for loop, and let's use a variable this time. So we'll have a variable called number of rows, and we'll have 15 rows. So We'll start rows out at 1, we'll say while rows is less than or equal to number of rows, let's postfix increment rows. Remember, the basic parts of a for loop are initialization, condition, and update. For example, int x is equal to 0 would be the initialization while x is less than 5 would be the condition, and a postfix increment of x would be the update. 